Hello and welcome to this video. Today guys we're going to talk about an optimal way of structuring your Angular code, especially for larger applications. So usually what you're used to if you haven't worked with Angular for quite some time is that you generally create the components in the most outer folder here. So at the same place as I have the header now. This might be okay if you have a couple of components, but imagine now we're going to scale up and we're going to say, hey, listen, we want to have an enterprise application. How should we do it? So the way I usually do this for all of the enterprise applications that I'm a part of helping, supporting, and also creating myself would be to essentially create a couple of folders, right? Just to get the structure going. So you'd have a core folder, you would have a shared folder, and then you would have it depends if you want to call it features or modules. I usually call them modules and let's break them down. So the core, comp the core folder in this case would essentially contain the code that's shared across the entire application. So it would be application level stuff. So this would mean, for instance, the header component is, is used within the whole application. It would be a, a perfect thing to place within the core utilities here. So in this case, what I would do is create another folder here, which is components. I would drag the header component into the components. And also keep in mind that you, you usually want to have a module as well. So we'll generate a module, ng generate module, and let's call it core, and then we'll create flat because we already have the, we already have the folder here. So there's no need to, to generate the folders. So once this is done you'll see it will generate a core module within this folder here and we'll have the components here so obviously you should declare the header component here and it also needs to be exported here because this is what we want to use from the app app component ts file so what we need to do now is essentially remove the components from here try to keep the app module as clean as possible try not to use too much stuff I, this is just a tip for me because it will be so much easier for you in the long run when you keep it quite basic and simple. Simplicity is key when we are talking about enterprise applications because we're going to have to teach and educate new developers coming into the project. At the same time, we need to maintain a structure which follows the best practices. So, all right, we, we have the core module and we are importing everything from the core stuff into the core module. So here we could have... Uh, it could be guards, authentication guards, it could be other guards that we have. Uh, so it could be core models. I would say these core models would be just related to whatever you have within the core. So it, it would not be something that you potentially have in the shared folder. So just try to keep it simple. Try to keep everything here just related to itself so that we easily can break out stuff and so on. And of course, we have services. This could be the language services that we have or any extensions. We could also have utils or constants here. So constants, <clears throat> really anything related to the general structure would be in, the, in here. So code that is shared across the entire application. So you might think now, what's the difference be between the core and the shared? So this shared folder could be thought of as different stuff that's shared amongst the modules that we have. So it could be, for a, for instance, it could be the UI component library. So UI in this case, it could be, uh, it could be, it could be components, it could be utils, maybe you have utility functions that you're having here, uh, which is essentially needed for the modules. And yeah, this is like a common pattern that you could have. So think of the shared as stuff that's being shared amongst multiple modules. Meanwhile, the core is something that, that is generalized or used amongst the whole application that you have. Try to not have any pair dependencies within the modules. So if you have one module, uh, I'm going to talk to you shortly about what the module is and what you should place within the module. Some people call it, as I mentioned before, features. Usually I tend to call them uh, modules. So what we haven't done here is we haven't created the, the module for the uh, generate module for the shared map. Also keep in mind, this is a big mistake many people do. They import everything within this shared module. This is something you definitely don't want to do. What we would 
or should do essentially is to utilize tree shake ability in this case for instance if we were having a ui component um, so i will generate a module there for let's say we have an input module uh, we'll generate a module called input in this case i'm not going to use the flat flag because i wanted to generate a folder and then place it within the folder so input input module so now i would just go ahead and generate a component as well just to visualize how how this would work so we'll go with angular generate component input component and now we would have the input component here within the input module and now we can import sorry uh, it should be the declarations we should export so exporting the component so what will this do if we essentially export the input module from the shared module it would mean that we would have to import all of the different input components in all different places and this is something we do not want to do so we can do this by having a tree shake ability within our component in this way so one thing you could do if you if you don't want to have this annoying import statements from the code is to essentially combine it with some ts config that you could use so i will get to that quite shortly as long as we have spoken a bit more about the shared module so yeah so if in order to use this input module you would have to import the input module which means that we in this set will only import whatever comes from here so we would not have to import all of the different stuff that would exist within the shared module and this is something i would recommend doing i've seen multiple times where you have a shared module which is like 100 things that you're importing and exporting i think this is something you definitely should avoid something that i would mention to be shared it m might be maybe if you have translations you have you're exporting the translation module uh, for a child that you want to utilize in the different modules so you would have to define within the app module you would define translate module for root you would set up there how the logic should be and here you could essentially just import and export a translate module for root so something that would be widely used within every module that we have if you would have translation per se all right so now we, once we are breaking down the shared folder and of course here we could have shared services we could have shared yeah you name it it could be shared um, pipes it could be shared directives that we have anything that would be shared amongst the modules so something that would be used in more than one module so now we're going to talk about the module this is the thing where it might vary a lot between the projects so one thing i would recommend is essentially let's say we have a module here in this case we'll generate a module let's call it uh, account so in this case we're going to place everything related to one account within here it could be a profile page it could be um, you name it it could be anything related to a user in this and, and your account it could be yeah changing your password it could be all of this different stuff that would be placed here so usually what you do is you generate a module and within the module you would have components and you could have even like for this feature or module you might have services that's only related to this place so here's where you should place them and of course you would have want to have a routing module as well you, i could have generated that that was my mistake so in order for you to generate that you can say an angular generate module uh, account i will keep it flat and we will say routing so when you, you when you hit the routing flag it will automatically generate a routing module for you so if you would now this would enable for you to actually set up lazy loading which is quite awesome uh, so if we would go to the app routing module you could just point towards the, the so you say when you hit the account page we want to load children and in this case we're going to import and whatever comes from the ac account module uh, so now we have set up a lazy loading module which means that we will only load this chunk of code when we hit this path which is quite awesome so this is one way i have an, another video about lazy loading modules please feel free to look at that if that would be of interest so now coming back to this module so we have uh, the accounts module it has its own components it has its own services and in many cases i would also 
I recommend putting pages. So if you want to distinguish which components are visible components versus what components are used within the visual parts or the pages per se, I would recommend having this structure. It becomes much easier for you to, to work with because you will automatically understand, okay, whatever is within the pages is what we have set up in the route. So you wouldn't have to go the other way around looking here and checking which components is being used as the pages and whatnot. So this is what I would recommend setting up a structure like this. It would simplify, simplify a lot when it comes to working in this way. So this, my friends, is a recommendation on how to work with it. There is no significant way or no exact way without understanding the business logic. Also keep in mind that if you don't have any peer dependencies from the modules to between the different modules, it might be easy to break it out later to maybe start working with micro frontends and so on. So now one thing I want to recommend is that if I let's say I want to use the input module in the accounts module that we generated, I would just have to import the input module in this way. And if you just take a look at this, the, the import source, it looks like it's, it's, it's so ugly. So there's a couple of ways we could improve this. We could do it by first and foremost, working a bit with the TS config file to make sure we have alias to set up so that it looks nicer. So the way we could make this even better would be to jump into the TS config file. Here we could go ahead and add some paths within the compiler options. And we say whenever uh, we use this alias, we want to point it towards this source. So uh, UI slash anything would be matching whatever we have there afterwards. So if you look here now, we should be able to to import it from UI slash input slash input module, which is also not very nice. So we could now start working with something called barrel functions or bar sorry, barrel files really. So in this case, we would go with within the input, would have an input.ts file, which essentially would just export start from input module. So if we now look at it, we should be able to import it from should be able to import it through the input slash input, which is also not very nice. There's also even better ways to doing it. We could also have another outer index.ts file. So here we would just export anything that comes from the input input module. So in this case, we should be able to just import it from the UI if everything's set up correctly, which it seems not to be because we are not ex importing it from the input slash input like this. And now it should be possible for us to utilize it from there. And of course it won't work if, if we don't set up the route correctly. So we can say whenever you are on UI, then we are going to prefix with this. So now, when we added the barrel file, we have a file called like index.ts, which exports the, the input component. But if I now remove this, it would be the same thing because it goes towards the index.ts file. So now you can see I've imported the input module just from the UI. And there you can specify what aliases you want to have for your application, which is super nice. So now imagine I want to create another component in this UI component library that we have because we don't want to have multiple import statements. So for instance, the input would come from slash input and the, the button would come from slash button. We could have it in this way, but there's no, no need to do it because this is where uh, it, the bundle optimization will essentially remove stuff that we don't use from us. So what we would want to achieve now in this way would be to add, for instance, a button module, which essentially would now come from the same import statement would which would simplify the code it would look much better it would be easy when we move files and stuff we only need to make sure that we we have import statements correct coming from the barrel files that we have and not cross the whole application so now imagine i want to create the new module so let's see in angular generate module let's call it button module we're going to do this just for visibility purposes so that you can see what happens so in this case 
there's not really a need to have double barrel files i want just wanted to show you how it would work so now we could just say uh, export store from button slash button module and in this case we can import button module from the ui in this way so i would say in combination having this folder structure also make sure that you have the 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 paths set up for your typescript so that it looks better in the code it's easier to use and in the end you wouldn't have to change 40 different files when you are changing uh, the folder structure within the ui module all right guys this is it for for this video thank you for watching all the best bye